Hey everyone, the show you're about to hear was recorded last July in Nashville, one of a series of shows that I didn't get a chance to release until now. And I'm happy to get this one out now because Naomi's one-woman show, The Small's World, premieres this Tuesday, September 1st. And you can get your tickets right now at NaomiSmallsDuh.com, which is Naomi Small spelled as you would normally spell it, D-U-H dot com. And before we get into my chat with Naomi, I want to tell you about the exciting things coming to patreon.com slash Craig and Friends. Adding to the extensive movie club library, Karen from Finance and Jake Shears are both joining me in about a week to tape a movie club all about the Dolly Parton, Jane Fonda, and Lily Tomlin classic, 9 to 5. And none other than Tammy Brown will be joining me later in the month for a Tootsie movie club. Listener question threads are live for episodes with not only the fabulous Crystal, but also the enchanting goth Charlotte. Ask us anything. Not only that, but bonus episodes are on the way with our pals Dee Dee and Remy Kesemir, plus a Hot Dog Club only chat with the Queen of the North, Brooklyn Heights. So head on over to patreon.com slash Craig and Friends and slide on in to the Thunderbuns of Hot Dog Club. And while you're listening to this episode, please rate and review the show on your podcast app and make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss a trick or a treat. And just a reminder, Naomi's debut one-woman show, The Smalls World, premieres this Tuesday, September 1st. Get your tickets at Naomi's website or Voss Events. Now with that out of the way, let's get into my chat with Naomi Smalls, also featuring our friend from Nashville, Katie Banye. A Russian ballerina stopping on a bureaucrat. A perky suburban housewife who just got into scats. Give it a beep, boop, 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 bow, boop, boop, bow. It's whimsically volatile. Hello, this is Davis Happenstall, Naomi Smalls, <laughs> landed in Nashville, sweating my ass off. Yeah, so let's start there. It's very hot. It's extremely hot. It's so hot. Yeah, and I uh, didn't really bring appropriate clothing i have a couple short sleeve shirts but they're already in need of the laundry Soaked. yeah oh yeah absolutely well yeah. when we have like hot in california what we're not used to is the humidity not at all and i'm from the east coast so mm-hmm. like w- the first time i was aware that it was 82 degrees in la it didn't even occur to me i looked down and saw the um gauge and i was like what because i didn't know about the whole dry heat thing and then all a million conversations that i've overheard made sense you know like oh it's the dry heat but don't you prefer it oh I, absolutely yeah oh, i'd rather be dry and hot than soaking and like having the whole swamp situation oh yeah no the swamp and weirdly last year i scheduled a trip to new orleans mid-july as well so this isn't quite as bad as that uh but i nearly fainted outside setting up for a garden party <laughs> yeah i was wearing full jeans and a three-quarter sleeve t-shirt which is actually i think more uh, damaging to my mental state was this a gay party uh yeah it was uh me and jake shears doing this thing and cool. he walked out right as i was about to like hit the ground you know what i mean like he saw you know when your friend catches you about uh-huh. to puke or something like that and he was like Are you okay i was like i need like five minutes in a cool room with oh some my water gosh. Yeah. well that's a good friend a very good friend he's yeah. checked it he's taking care he's taking care of checked it, it. <laughs> <laughs> so you just moved to california i just moved to california i was i'm actually from california i mm-hmm. grew up there for 21 years I did season eight of RuPaul's Drag Race, and yeah. then I moved to Chicago. Mm-hmm. What like, brought you to Chicago? Um, I made really good friends with Kimchi, mm-hmm. um, and I just needed like a change of pace. Mm-hmm. And my mom was moving, and it just like kind of worked out. I wanted to do something spontaneous, and I really fell in love with the city when I would um, always visit. And they had really amazing drag, and yeah. the city's so clean. And it's just like I really like thrived in Chicago. What about the humidity though? Isn't it a crazy humid uh, <sighs> town? Okay, so this job that I have as a drag queen who gets to travel a lot, yeah. um, I never really had to experience, ooh, oh, we got a call. We do. We have an exciting call. So thank you, Karen, <laughs> but we can't take your call right now. But Bye, you know, Karen. your input is appreciated. Yeah. <laughs> also joining us, Katie. Hello, hello, hello. Um, yeah, so wait, what were we saying? Yeah, the humidity in Chicago. Oh, yeah, but I just like really love chicago and i never had to be in the whole city for like more than three weeks at a time oh okay that makes it easier to like it so i never had to like (laughs) hate a season yeah because i could not deal with that snow growing up in california what was your first winter in chicago like i mean you were only there for a few days at a time but yeah my my friends in chicago were laughing because i kept calling it so cute (laughs) because i had just like never seen snow yeah yeah the novelty stays for about what like how long a few months few weeks three weeks and then i have a gig (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's you're never there long enough to get sick of it which is nice Yeah, yeah i like that and you're on tour right now and well you're wrapping up the tour with this stop is that right i am in between tours right now i just came back from i'm um, doing europe for about 
a month and a half and yeah. with the work the world tour and now we're going to do north america in september and oh, right cool. now i'm just doing like in between it's pride season mm-hmm. so all the gays are out celebrating and of course they needed a seven foot drag queen to be there <laughs> of course yeah with legs for days plus <laughs> you know as the co-creator of club 96 oh my god club 96 <laughs> <laughs> I was just listening to the Valentina podcast. Oh, cool! So before I came over, oh, I great. wanted to like brush up. There, yeah, you know? sure, sure. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> and you still came over, which you know that's of great. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm like, I like leaning more into being more of like a open figure. Oh, sure. I've always been kind of like recluse and mm-hmm. just not really sure how to like tackle the whole presenting my personality to that audience. It's it is really, tricky to integrate, right? It, it really is. Mm-hmm. I'm just kind of learning still. So um, okay. thank you so much for coming, letting me come and like do this podcast. Oh, I'm thrilled. I'm so happy you, uh, that this worked out. So let's get into it. Let's get into integrating your, it. your personality with the <laughs> public character of Naomi Smalls. So I guess we'll start sort of at the beginning. And you grew up in a very large family. I did. I have um, 11 brothers and sisters. Mm-hmm. So um, there's 12 of us total. Uh, my mother, June Happenstall, and my dad, Malcolm Happenstall, are amazing people who just really wanted a big family and they yeah. adopted eight of 12 of us so wow yeah. we're a very mixed family mm-hmm. i'm really lucky in it too because i'm 11 out of 12 oh, so wow. like okay. my parents by the time they had a drag queen in high it's school like, that's they great. were like yeah, whatever that's... as long as you're passing and you're not doing drugs you're fine you yeah know? right they're more understanding totally yeah. and I, I mean you get it because like when people have babies they're like oh my god all about that baby and like oh, worrying sure. so hard about like if it's going to get close to that outlet <laughs> but really it's totally fine yeah and if they hit their head on the sharp corner of the table well they'll learn not to do it next time right and they get very used to that yeah and if they if they have a wig on their head they can be happy what age were you when you started getting interested in drag um i've definitely was always just like interested in my little pony barbie yeah Anything that my brothers were not playing with, <laughs> I was all about. Um, and what's the split between uh, boys and girls in the family? Um, it's eight brothers and three, uh, yeah, eight brothers, three sisters. So I was always playing with my sister's toys like, sure. growing up. Yeah. Um, and I just really fell in love with um, like pop icons when I was in like around high school. Like, so I was all about Katy Perry and yeah. Lady Gaga and Beyonce. And sure. then I started getting into um, RuPaul's Drag Race. Sure. I've heard of that. And so that- not a bad, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've been trying to get into it lately. Yeah. And I was uh, like a junior in high school. Mm-hmm. And I just never thought I was like wanted to do drag or anything, but it just thought it was something that was really cool. And then when I went to go see like shows, I was like, oh, this is fun. So what was the first show that you went to? Um, it was in Upland, California mm-hmm. at Oasis. Mm-hmm. And it kind of segued over to 340 Pomona. Oh, Pomona. In California. Uh-huh. And I used to compete in that competition. And last weekend, actually, it was the first time I went back in like four years. Oh, that must have been cool. great. Yeah. Yeah. So the first time you performed, when was that? I was 18 years old, mm-hmm. fresh out of beauty school. My mom paid for like my entire outfit. I competed against Laganja Estranja <laughs> <laughs> before we were both on TV. Yeah. Um, it was very fun. What were your go to numbers? I never had a go to like my first three years of drag. Uh huh. It was always something new when I was on stage. And yeah. that was kind of just like how it kept it like really fun and exciting. Oh, sure. See what she's doing this week. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and like also I'm like a very creative person, so if you're going to do the same thing every single time, like it gets kind of draining. Sure, absolutely. Yes, yeah. so you had quite a wide repertoire even early on. Yes, but it was all very legs. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I mean, how can you not do that? I mean, you have to totally. factor that into. I mean, you're not going to do a non-leg thing, right? Totally. Yeah, I have to take advantage of that I'm the Shaquille O'Neal of drag. Yeah, you exactly. Know? You embrace your strengths totally. to maximize. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> marketing. Yeah, I'm always like. Sh- I feel like moving away from the microphone. A lot of drag queens, like when they're in drag, you can tell that they are the host because like it is their lip color on the mic. (laughs) (laughs) Like they pissed on it. That's their version of marking their territory. Oh yeah, that's right. You you put your stamp on it. Totally. Yeah. Have you hosted shows? Uh, I have been like hosting more shows lately. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm having a lot more fun doing it than I first started. And it's crazy, like, the change of just confidence happens during time. Uh Like, after season eight, I was uh, 
so nervous to talk on the mic. I didn't really want to do it at all. And now, like, if you pass me a microphone, like, they're, like, waiting for me to get off the stage pretty much because I'm just, like, having fun talking yeah, to yeah. people who... Um, want to see you. Yeah, want to see me. Right, it's, it's hard cool. to argue with that. Totally. I have, like, the best job in the world. Mm -hmm. I really do have the best job in the world. And, yeah. then, like, I have the coolest fans, too, in the world. Do you ever find that burnout point, though? Because a lot of times people have trouble balancing what they need for themselves for self-care and saying yes to a gig. Totally. Um, if there's definitely a balance. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just like going to be an ongoing thing for me, uh -huh. at least right now. Sure. I'm still trying to find the balance. I think, yeah, that's standard. But what uh, oh. did you have some problems at first? Because, you know, when it first hits you and you're being offered everything right and left, mm -hmm. did you find any kind of burnout? Uh, not in the beginning oh, at okay. all, actually. It's actually kind of tricky then because you're like, I can just do this around the clock. Totally. And then, yeah. yeah. And then I mean, I get to a point where like, it's like 4 a.m. Do I want to be like in a nightclub till 4 a.m. <laughs> waiting for my paycheck? Oh, yeah. Right. So it's right now I'm trying to think of like the moves to not have myself in that situation. Sure. Because everyone goes through that, you know, mm -hmm. like you're used to something, but you want to improve and then you're just like finding the next step right so one woman show at some point is coming maybe that <sighs> have you seen sasha's no i haven't oh my god <laughs> smoke and mirrors is like it's sasha is one of the queens that like really inspires me to just do better uh -huh. as a drag queen sure and as a performer and her one woman show was incredible like so simple but mm -hmm. so effective and that's just something that i think is like really amazing with sasha Valor's brand my one woman show I'm working on right now is called Smalls World. It's gonna take took from like the confidence that I found from doing Smalls World, the YouTube series, yeah. um, and it's just a docu series I did with Todd Diedrich and Cameron Trax, and it just helped me like find my voice on stage, and mm -hmm. that's kind of what I want to do with, but like with a more in person experience. Sure. Well, I mean, coupled with the confidence that you were talking about before, where it's hard to get the mic away from you, it sounds like it's a good recipe. Yeah. Yeah. I hope yeah. so. <laughs> yeah. I imagine so. Yeah. I, I think that like confidence is something that um, should not be taken for granted. No, it's also a very difficult thing for all of us to achieve totally. no matter what. And like you said, it was after season eight, like you'd already achieved a big goal of yours and yet still you found that it was something that you had to work on totally which is like it's something that ni nice to point out to people because sometimes you can think oh they have it all set they're they've got it sorted out but everyone's still kind of on that path all the time oh totally i think like improvement should be like the a practice everybody should mm -hmm. go for there's yeah. like nothing better than just one-upping yourself yeah exactly always working on yourself like therapy or something like that totally yeah do you go to therapy? Do you do anything like that? I don't, and I really want to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that it would be good for me, but like, I think it's just like a couple of things I need to work out as far as like, we all got a couple, right? You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but for the most part, I'm a pretty happy person, but there's I, there's definitely a couple of demons in the closet. Do you want to get into out. some of those? Even just suggest maybe one of the cuter demons? Um, Cuter demon. Oh, I lost my dog. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> i lost my childhood dog that's oh i'm a cute sorry demon. yeah that's a cute demon you yeah. gotta work through that yeah, yeah you gotta totally. do what was your what was your dog's name a ginger oh, she cute. was the best dog in the entire world what kind of dog um she was a bearder collie mutt mm -hmm. and she was like 15 years old but she like was obsessed with me and she was blind she could barely get up to that point but she yeah had, she had a good life that's good yeah 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 are you thinking about a new dog <gasps> no yeah because i want that dog to be like with me at all times oh and sure i, I yeah, live on yeah. an airplane yeah, you true. Know? you'd have to have like jane fonda's dog and i kind of look at i kind of look um funny at all these dogs and vests on planes <laughs> these days yeah yeah it's wild it's kind of cute yeah it's cute but yeah. like as someone who like is always on a plane i don't yeah. necessarily want to be next to uh pitbull who's taking a shit <laughs> Well, with a vest on where do you put them yeah when you're right performing? yeah well that's true well then you'd have to have another assistant just to mind the dog and then like their poor ears of being in the nightclub no oh no you'd have you to know? get them hearing yeah. protection and that's a whole thing and then they'd, they'd be batting it off you totally. put a cone on them it's a whole process it's a whole it thing is. yeah then they're miserable they're miserable yeah. yeah unless they really like to flex it at the club I mean, you know not every dog does you know what if i saw my dog twerking at the club i'd probably go up and tip it so I want to get Give your opinion on, uh, on this license plate that we saw the other day. <laughs> this could mean one of two things, and I want to see what you take it to be. So just be a second while I pull this up. Where was this? 
This was, where was this actually? Was this at? It was uh, outside the Belcourt. Outside the Belcourt mm-hmm. Theater. Yeah, okay. yeah. Fabulous movie theater where Katie and I went to see. What did you guys see? Uh, we went to see uh, Before Stonewall. Okay. Now, what does that say? Not working. Okay. Now, no twerking. There you go. So which, which one, one is it? Ooh. Or like, which one are you? I I hope it's no twerking. Really? But then that's no fun. Yeah, we were like, that's either no but fun like, or a lot of fun. You know what? I think it's more like insinuating. Please don't twerk on my car. Because have you ever seen that trend? Like the, no. the, the girls who like twerk in a split and then like land on the car oh, and keep okay. twerking. Maybe that's been an but issue with that car. It might be. Yeah. I'm also like a deep tumbler. So I don't oh, know. Yeah, deep you tumbler. Know? Yeah. What kind of deep uh, tunnels do you get into on the tumbler? Oh my gosh. Well, what, what we used to get into. <laughs> when that's, yeah. no. that's what tumbler no was. No, yeah, yeah, that's right. There's nothing really happening there. Yeah. Anymore, right? It's unfortunate because I like grew up on Tumblr for sure. Oh yeah, yeah, for it's the sure. Access the gateway to the world. Mm-hmm. I heard a, someone the other day told me, "Oh, they're going to be banning nudity and porn on Twitter." I was like, "No, that can't." I believed it for about ten seconds, and then I was like, "That can't be possible." Twitter is like the new Tumblr. There's so much like naughty stuff on Twitter. That's now. what Twitter's for, right? I thought right. it was over. I mean, porn will either uh, be the driving force of a technology like VHS. Uh, or the only thing that keeps an old technology around. Like, True. Yeah, it's crazy how, what percentage of like the images out there are just like nudity <laughs> on, online. Yeah. What's the last nude that you took? What were Ooh, you wearing? what was I wearing? Probably. Oh, I remember. Um, it was like side boob, and then I just like put it together. So and then had a friend take it for me. Fierce. So it was like a group effort. That's yeah. a good friend. That yeah. is a good friend. What about you? Yeah. The last nude I took was it was at the gym and I was like lifting my short and like snapping my jock strap at the same time. <laughs> yeah, a little Sporty. peekaboo. Yeah, I yeah. love the locker room. Oh yeah? I love going to the gym actually. Mm-hmm. It makes me feel like um I'm doing something with my day. How often do you go during the week? If I'm home, I go every day. Really? Now, what time of day do you go? I like to go in the morning. Mm-hmm. Start your like day with the... 10.30. Mm-hmm. After all the people like who have like a 9 to 5 have left. The trouble element is what yeah, you're talking about. Totally. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Like generous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like empty at the uh-huh. gym. Empty, but a uh, few people. Maybe. Yeah, because you have to perform for those people. That's how, <laughs> that's how I do it. Like I'm like practicing my lip syncs on the treadmill. Sure, fully lip syncing, fully lip gloss. Of course. Now, because uh, a home gym wouldn't be any good because you'd just be like, "Who's around?" Well, yeah. You'd have to bring people in. Then again, you're building this entourage. You have the dog, the dog assistant, <laughs> <laughs> and it's twerking. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Then you're like, "Do I have a no twerking sign or not?" Yeah. <laughs> Maybe on their car, on the assistant's car. Um, oh my God, on their on their collar. Yes, that's perfect. <laughs> Whoa. Mm-hmm. I like this. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is good. I think we have your uh, touring uh, crew for your one woman show all set. Now. Small's World is casted. Yeah. <laughs> extra, extra. Or a campaign. Ooh, Ooh yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm like waiting on a campaign to come out right now. Ooh. I like, sh- I shot one like in Milan and I it was like a long time ago. <laughs> and my Instagram is dry and it needs that. Okay. Now, when is it coming out? I don't know. Oh my God. I've, I've seen all the finished images too. And I'm just like waiting. Can you say what it is? Or, and I if it's, can't. how about this? I don't know when this is coming out. So uh-huh. if it's after it comes out, oh my God. I'll leave it in. This is a lot of trust. Yeah. But like, come on, look at this face. But I mean, like, I don't know if you'll also know it. But, but you know, you could make it up. That's the thing. You could totally breeze. make it up. Oh my God, Febreze! Yeah, that's don't, the t- real? don't tell anyone it's Febreze. That's, that's fab. Am- that that's that's is amazing. amazing. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's <laughs> great. Yeah, no twerking. Yeah, no twerking. No twerking. No Febreze. Twerking. <laughs> yeah, or not working. No, that doesn't sound good. No, no, no. You can't be like mm. if you're not working. Febreze. <laughs> I yeah. mean, not working sounds great though. <laughs> yeah, or when you get down to it, it makes people think it doesn't work though either. So that's oh yeah, the that's issue. right. That's so, the main problem. You're right. I was thinking yeah. more of as an employment shade. You do yeah. not want to be that campaign girl. No. Oh no, that's no. A tough sell. Yeah, you don't want to have a whole thing blow up in your face. <laughs> and you've had a couple things blow up in your face. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, like what? What do you know? Oh uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. actually is that a, no. Is I'm that just, a lip joke? I'm just. Uh, <laughs> I was just fishing. I didn't know anything about any tweets or anything that might have gone south. But, oh uh, my gosh. That's where I really learned about Twitter. Yeah, that's when you fully got the full slap yeah. in the face. Uh, that's why I really crazy. Re- like realized that not like every thought that comes into your head needs to go into the public. Sure. Yeah. Well, it's easy to forget that. Yeah. I mean, 
Yeah, people are like click like, they the retweet, people, and then suddenly, and then suddenly they're the president. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I still don't understand the like, is he getting spanked? What's happening? Seemingly nothing. I think he's gone way too far past the point of decency or anyone being shocked. And it's just every day there's something new and horrible that happens. Right. Yeah. And we're. Beautiful. Uh, yeah. Isn't that wonderful? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's created a new low that will never be uh, will never be done. We'll keep going down this tunnel. I would love to know if he's like getting paid anything for these tweets. Hmm. You know. Just well, if like, you start sneaking them like Wendy's is a great burger, like kind of stuff into the, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're not working, at least use Febreze. <laughs> but definitely no twerking. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's a pretty good Donald. Thank you very much. Yeah. Terrifying. Well, you know, uh, anyone, <laughs> anyone I admire that much, I really like to try to really capture their essence. No, but yeah. Um, that that blowing up the yeah. the Manchester the thing. Manchester tweet yeah and what was it again what that that yeah, you said what is this? yeah um, oh my gosh if I you want to relive have, the whole thing this is what I I'm haven't trying talked to... about this in a while but okay. um, there's a lot of trust you know? that's the thing <laughs> but look at this face right yeah well I'm a huge Ariana Grande fan right and when the Manchester incident happened I tweeted out it's so sad to think because I just went to go see her and I was like, it's so sad to think that I was living at the Ariana Grande concert yeah. and while others were dying and I was being like genuine. Like, I mean, yeah. it's so sad to think that. Sure. But that cadence did not come across <laughs> online and I totally understand why sure. it didn't. Yeah. yeah. It's like um, when you reread a text that you'd like sent and you're like, oh no, they're going to think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But how would you know? That tone is real. E- right. A hundred percent. Yeah. And then that just kind of took me through like this whole spiral with Twitter and like I don't that took me through even more closing them off the door. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah, I just like didn't think that they were understanding what I was getting at. So yeah, and it could be scary too. I mean, you got some vicious stuff lobbed your way, right? It's crazy how vicious twelve year old girls are. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I was pretty bad when I was that age too. Really? Oh my god! Yeah. Did you troll? I got. An in-house suspension once. My mom had really? to come and, and sit at the school with me because I cut a girl out of a photo of me and my friends. <laughs> and I, I got all of us in trouble for that. Uh huh. And it was and, on display? Like, could the girl see it who was excised from the photo? Uh, totally. And oh. her mom got into it oh, and all yeah. this stuff. Sure. And, um, and her I name was am- Manila Luzon. <laughs> <laughs> See, the beef goes back a lot further I mean, than I people mean, know. You know? I, mean, yeah. I can't imagine what how I would be at that age with the internet. Oh, I can't imagine it. You know? I'm kind of thrilled that I bypassed that. Yeah, I'm 43, so it was like that wasn't even a thing. Gotcha. It was like dial up and all that, yeah. You look great, though. Oh, thank you. The skincare. Yes, that's what it is. It's, that's what it is. It's a regimen. I see you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I feel seen. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, after that, you close off a little bit, understandably. Mm-hmm. What was your approach to social media then or interfacing with the public? Um, my approach to social media is just like, I'll kind of just give you what I want you to know now. Sure. You don't need to know every single thing about me. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think I want to know every single thing about the people I look up to, too. Sure. Um, you want some, a little bit of mystery? I do like a little bit of mystery. And that's just kind of who I am. Like, I'm not necessarily super... I think I'm a really like good person and I'm not malicious, but I'm not going to give you my 100% if I don't know you. Yet. Well, you're cautious, yeah. Yeah. which is a reasonable thing to be. Because which, is, which is why I said Febreze. <laughs> or, what is that? Did I say Febreze? <laughs> yes, yeah, you did. Febreze. Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the new spokeswoman for Febreze. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's going to be a fabulous and uh, pleasant smelling campaign. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, got, it's too bad you couldn't get Swiffer. I but, know. Yeah, but next year. With next the year. leg, or too. Or exactly. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Although, hefty. <laughs> hefty. Yeah. Trash. We want a hefty. <laughs> Who are some of the people that you look up to? Oh, I look up to my mom is number one for sure. She's just like the coolest, strongest, most confident woman. And what's um, your mom's name? My mom's name is June Heppenstall. Hello, June. Yeah, she's the best. She, shout out to June. She raised 12 kids and she's been a mom for like 50 years. That's a, that's a lot of kids. My, my yeah. dad is the oldest of 12. So that number always stunned me. And I never sort of tire of being like, oh my God, I don't know how they did that. No. And I mean, kids are crazy. Yeah. 
yeah kids are crazy and there's such a big responsibility mm -hmm. um i'm obsessed and i love wendy williams okay she wasn't is, her birthday yesterday or today? it was her birthday today oh happy birthday yes. wendy cancer yes mm. when's your birthday i am september 8th i'm a virgo oh Mm -hmm. I think I'm a very Virgo too. Like the more I learn about it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So are you into astrology? Not really. Mm -hmm. Like I don't. I mean, you don't live your life by the rules of. Yeah. I, sure. I never really like got into it when I was younger, and my all my friends are so into it now. But I never really clicked with it. But it's cool reading about it. Yeah, it's fun, right? Especially when something seems to resonate or it seems positive about something that you want to turn out well. Right. Yeah. At least you're hopeful for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Would you ever do the dating horoscopes thing? You, know, you meet someone, they're cute, and you're like, oh, they're, they're so, well, I might as well oh, look absolutely. up. Oh, absolutely. Because yeah, right. I, I mean, I'm, I was a girl in middle school who had a crush on a straight boy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> of course, like every gay boy. <laughs> when was your first kiss? Uh, my first kiss, oh my gosh, my, I know it was playing too. Oh, um, I love that. You got to give me the soundtrack. It was my 10th grade homecoming and it was womanizer by britney spears wow. was playing in the background it's a great first kiss song yeah and i had a crush on him for so long but he knew it and like he just kissed me as a friend okay so which was, hurt then yeah. but like as a grown bitch now i'm like thank you you know <laughs> yeah well then when was the first kiss that wasn't just as a friend Ooh. But I gotta say, Womanizer, what a great fact is like the drama of the song and everything. Oh, and you're my like, God. this is my crush. And all these like straight girl, straight boys and girls dancing around <laughs> us. And we were like living our glee fantasy. <laughs> 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 yeah. I, never, I was always like that gay kid. Oh, okay. In high school. Okay, right. So you were like the celebrated. Totally. Yeah. I was wearing heels to high school. My mom like oh, that's fab. bought me um, like five inch wedges for my um, 16th birthday. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Hmm. That's cool. Yeah. I get to tower over all the teachers yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in my booty shorts. Yeah. <laughs> Again, hard to argue with. Yeah. 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 I, I was, my mom, Um, I, I was like the only kid. Another time I got suspended. Um, uh oh, what happened now? For my booty shorts. Uh huh. Okay, sure. And were, I, just teachers were distracted? Yes. <laughs> and I was, um, the reason they had to start the rule that your, your um, shorts had to be longer than your fingertips. <laughs> <laughs> and when my mom and I walked into the car, yeah, after they had a status down and told me I was suspended and da 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 da, she just started laughing for so long, <laughs> and she said, "Only my son could get sent home for booty shorts." Oh, that's beautiful. That's yeah. lovely that she had that attitude. That, that just shows no you how twerking. cool she is. Yeah, no twerking. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That, that was a sign they had then mm -hmm. at your school, I guess. Right after you were there. Put it yeah. Up there. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, my, pan my pancake butt cannot twerk. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you saw that in the sign. You're like, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. There shouldn't be twerking. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so when was your first uh not friend kiss i'm trying to think i don't even remember it that's so sad um well there's just been so many right that it's it was hard just to... a series of dopes after that <laughs> you know <laughs> bunch of dummies what yeah <laughs> oh what, what's that what a good uh, word to use yeah just dope is really dopes. good yeah yeah yeah, yeah. dopes uh -huh. yeah mm -hmm. not in the good it. way no <laughs> <laughs> so do you like to party then is that Oh no! Oh my God! No 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 no! no. I was like, what? Uh, Dope. No, no, I was like, easy the question. mother is listening. I know. I'm sorry, June. Listen, I have to ask these questions. You know what I mean? You never know. They might say yes. And plus, you know, Naomi's opening up for the first time. Oh right? my God! The first time ever. It's such a dramatic. Like remember those right, like yeah. dramatic TV specials? <laughs> for the first time ever, Naomi Smalls tells the truth about her booty shorts. <laughs> <laughs> and her opening up about the Febreze campaign. <laughs> what really happened behind the scenes? The scandal about the Febreze coming up next after the break. <laughs> what else was she? <laughs> what else was she suspended for? Find out next. <laughs> so in school, though, you did pretty well. And outside of these little infractions, everything went along smoothly. Oh, I mean, I graduated for okay. sure. I yeah. knew I was not going to go to college. Sure. Okay. When did you figure that out? um because I, I was like hated academics <laughs> i really did it just didn't like click with me yeah sure um i loved going to school for the social i yeah. loved seeing my friends i loved picking an outfit out for the day yeah um but i had to like sweet talk my teachers into giving me a passing c oh, out of like right. a lot of my classes because if you don't get the passing you're gonna have to repeat a year yep yeah and i don't want to like do some more book reports about 
Miley Cyrus's autobiography. Yeah. And because once is enough. You did the perfect work on that, right? I think I turned that in like three times and they let me. <laughs> <laughs> they were just saying, Miley Cyrus, miles to go. Oh, wow. So how is that book? You seem to be a big fan of it. Um, I, it was really good when I was in high school. What else did you, were you a fan of reading wise um, or? Ooh. favorite movies too let's get into that oh my god favorite movies oh well i don't think i'd be the bitch i am today without paris is burning oh yeah absolutely i, I mean, mean i think that's true for a lot of people right totally I mean, it's uh so uh what's the word seminal yeah yeah it's important it's very important it, what is seminal yeah. seminal is I told it you means important but it has something to do it's weird because it's seminal semen there's something about it fertilizing mm. but it's like mildly gross but it's one of those things you see in a lot of reviews be like the seminal work of but important i think is better important yeah keep it classic yeah exactly yeah yeah we wouldn't <laughs> want to be uh, not classy on this show no oh classy okay classy. oh you said classic yeah classic. Sick. yeah yeah <laughs> how old were you when you saw it for the first time i think i was um i want to say 15 16 so it was like I, I watched it like every single night before i went to bed for oh, a good, wow. like, two years and just fell in love with like how open and how confident these people were and they yeah. were doing something that just like accentuated beauty and it had sure. all my interests of hair beauty makeup music mm -hmm. um and just like being you know, it was really cool so how long from there till your first performance um it was like two three years like, yeah like going right two, on the timeline years. yeah did you ever participate in balls then no i wish yeah oh my god i w like i honestly wish i could be a or not actually be because i it would be very complicated <laughs> but to go into a time machine yeah and, exactly right and yeah. live like a couple of weeks as a queen who did not grow up with the internet did not grow up with like youtube teaching you any eyeshadow tutorial you want to know right like literally having to figure it out and make it work because mm -hmm. that's so impressive to me as Adam and Eve likes to say, the best part of staying at home, oh, why it's playing at home. So whether you're having FaceTime sex or just some solo fun, get the accoutrement you need to maximize and enhance every aspect of your pleasure. Most of us are home a lot, so you want to have a good date night to yourself. Take advantage of the downtime, choose almost any one item at 50% off, and then when you do that, you're also going to get 10 free boredom-busting gifts, including six spicy movies a three-piece bonus kit, and best of all, free shipping delivered discreetly right to your door. I mean, that is a wonderful thing. I don't know if that's the best thing. I think the best of all part is the sex toys that you take out of that package that's delivered discreetly to your door. But the key to all of this is using the special offer code. And of course, surprisingly, the offer code is WV. That's right. Use WV at checkout. Nothing makes being at home more enjoyable than the right sex toys. And you want to make sure that you have the full spectrum available to you because you never know what kind of mood's going to strike. You never know what kind of play you might be into that day. Find the perfect fit at adamandeve.com. And when you go to adamandeve.com, make sure you use that offer code WV. We're going to take a moment out from the show right now to talk about something really important to everyone. Mental health. And this is a really difficult time for most people. And it really helps to be able to talk to someone. And sometimes you can't talk to a friend or family member about certain things. Also, sometimes you're up in the middle of the night and you maybe want to talk to a professional. Well, there is a solution. Maybe you don't have an online therapist or maybe you just need to talk to someone right now. And so I want to tell you about BetterHelp.com. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. I do too, honestly, but right now we're talking about better health and what they want to do and what they can do because maybe there's something interfering with your happiness, you know, like a, like a pandemic or um, the other things that happen when you're stuck in your place all the time, or maybe there's other situations going on. Whatever it is, even if you have just something preventing you from achieving your goals, we all have stuff and things that we need to take care of and betterhelp.com will assess your needs and then match you with your own licensed professional therapist. Once you sign up, you can start communicating in under 48 hours. And it's not a crisis line and not necessarily self-help. What it is is professional counseling done securely online. And it doesn't matter what you want to talk about. They offer a broad range of expertise and the service is available worldwide. So wherever you are, once you set up an account, you can log in anytime, then send a message to your counselor. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches. So they make it easy and free to change counselors if need be. 
Their service is also more affordable than traditional offline counseling, and um, financial aid is available. There's a special offer for Whimsically Volatile listeners, and you can get that by going to betterhelp.com slash WV. That's better, H-E-L-P, dot com slash WV. And going there that way, it'll get you 10% off your first month. Remember, that's betterhelp.com slash WV. What queens did you like on Drag Race when you first started watching it? Um, I was always a huge fan of Raven. Mm-hmm. Um, the cosmetics. Sure. Amazing. Um, and she is that bitch. Like, very 100%. Yeah. Have you ever gotten to work with Raven? Oh, yeah. I um, I used to, like, go to her weekly show before I did drag, um, like, every single week for a couple months. And then I entered the contest, and she used to host that contest. Oh, wow. Okay. So she, I used yeah. to, like, pretty much perform for her because right. she was a judge, too. Yeah. Love her. Um, I love Roxy Andrews. Mm-hmm. I think she is an amazing drag queen. She is, like, so polished crazy polished and who did i like before? oh violet okay now after being on the show who are the, some of the queens that you like um in following seasons yeah kimberly g yeah. <laughs> i love her <laughs> yeah that's my girl a hundred percent um i'm so happy that we did drag race mainly for that for that reason yeah sure that friendship has brought me a, an amazing life who do I bond with besides that? Besides Kim and Bob, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Like that I'm like, we're ride or dies. Right. Sure. Sure. Did you have any uh, beefs that we didn't see? Oh my God. Everyone hated Kim and I on the season <laughs> eight uh, premiere tour because really? we were, this was when Snapchat was big. And you were cutting people out of pictures. <laughs> <laughs> didn't learn your lesson back then you know? oh my god you got me <laughs> you got me all figured out See, this is why don't you sit down no, right. <laughs> <laughs> um kim and i were snapchatting everybody when they did not want to be snapchatted so when oh, they were changing when they were perfect. sleeping sure yeah and yeah. it just got under people's nerves <laughs> really and why i don't know why? I know. What are they so stuck up for? I mean, what the... Seems fine. Totally like, fine. Totally not invasive. Right? Not at all. Everybody yeah. wants to be like seen like... Over camp. In their exactly. private area. They really do. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and these overreactors. But I know, God. Babies. Layla ended up punching me. <laughs> and... <laughs> Where did she punch you? She punched me in my back. Oh, okay. She, at least she was sweet and she didn't keep in the face, you know? Well, that's true. It's also a dirty move, though. So it's like half and half. I know, pussy. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, sneak attack. Mm-hmm. No good. Mm-hmm. She must be a Sagittarius. <laughs> <laughs> must be. Must, I'd bet money on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but besides that, no fights. No fights. That's yeah. too bad. But, I mean, that's good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when was your first uh, boyfriend? Uh, my first boyfriend was when I was eight. Mm-hmm. Was he one of the dopes? Yeah. No, 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 no. He was not one of the dopes. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was very good. Yeah. I learned a lot about myself. Now, where did you meet? Um, we met on the good old grinder. Fabulous, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had a grind I had I didn't have an iPhone at this time and I had to use an iTouch. And we had really bad Wi Fi at my mom's <laughs> house, so I had to be like up against the router. So it was always <laughs> really risky being on grinder. Yeah. You're just trying to get signal. I was just trying to get tech. <laughs> That's what I meant by signal. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, we met on there and we dated for three years. Wow, yeah. three years. It's mm-hmm. impressive. Yeah. Were you together when you got Drag Race? On season eight, yes. Okay. He actually paid for my first syringe of lips. Yeah. Like, Whoa. That is... Yeah. It's very special. That is special. very, very special. Mm-hmm. Are you still in touch at all? Um, yeah. We text here. Good. Now. So you're on good terms and everything. Yeah. That's great. Totally. Did you have a lot of fun with people on the road once you started touring after Drag Race? Oh my God, totally. Like, mm-hmm. I learned so much on those bus tours. I, I don't like bus tours. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the big lesson. I learned yeah. that, but I will say it's like the most convenient way to travel when on tour because we spend so much time at the airport. Oh, sure. Just and just going to the airport uh-huh. and just waiting for your, your delayed flight. Da, 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 da. This cuts it out all the entire way and you get so much sleep on those tours. Oh, so. sure. So those cots are comfy. Uh, yeah. 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 Better than sleeping on a plane? Better than sleeping on a plane, for sure. When you sleep on a plane, do you need like a neck pillow? What's your situation? I am a window seat all the way. I can be in the back of the plane. I can be in the front of the plane. I can be in first class, yeah. whatever, as long as I'm in a window seat. 
I'm the same way. I need a window seat. Yeah. Because what else, what are the other options? You're in the middle between two people, right? Right. No. Or you're on the aisle and you're going to get constantly slapped by someone walking totally. by. Totally. Yeah. And when you when you have like legs, <laughs> yeah, it's just, for days. Yeah. You know, when you got legs and toes. <laughs> yeah. If it was one or the other, you could maybe deal with it. Yeah. And shoulder. <laughs> no. It's just a recipe for disaster. How long do you like to go out on tour at a time now? Two months is like. I'm at my limit. <laughs> That's a long time. It is a yeah. really long time. Is it? I, th- I mean, for touring, yeah. I feel like it it's is. It's impressive. Okay. Yeah. It Good. is impressive. Yeah. Because yeah. there's like some opportunities that they want you for like four months. Really? Two months is impressive. Yeah, it really is. I was just uh, away from uh, LA for about two and a half weeks, almost three in New York. And it was a lot of fun. It was mm-hmm. around the time of Pride and everything. Oh my God. It was great. But of course, of course I was exhausted. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I don't need to fill that blank in. I think we can all figure that out. But uh, um, then two days before leaving, I was like, I- I'm done. I want to go home. Right. <laughs> it was fine. I had a fine rest of my stay. But that was it i had to go there is nothing better than like sleeping in your own bed right showering in your own shower yeah. shitting in your own toilet yeah. just like doing your own routine mm-hmm. i will take that over a five-star hotel any day sure. of the week do you have any favorite hotels i do i love the standard mm-hmm. it makes me feel sexy <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it's a sexy place yeah, yeah it's sure. a very sexy place because also like, there's no covering on the window just no. you're just like hello the shower's yeah. in the middle of the room <laughs> um yeah i love the standard i love the library in london too oh that sounds cute mm-hmm. it's li- i'm going to london for the first time in september <gasps> Ooh, where are you gonna go yeah, you- I, well i'm actually staying with some friends but I, i'm gonna find like an airbnb for like the first two days and then they're just gonna show me around they cool. live there and they have this beautiful place so i'm excited about that I mean, i've never been to london oh you really no you've never been i to was london. like what that's, that's bizarre what I you just got there i'm going in october oh, oh that's gosh. so funny yeah we're both going in the fall love that yeah figured why not well, like that's same reason for me. That's only silly. The best reason to do a lot of things. Yeah, I've it is. Realized. Yeah, just why not? Now, with all the traveling that you do, do you ever just pick up and go somewhere just for fun? I'm gonna go to Iceland. I was just in Iceland. How was it? It was a lot of fun. Although I didn't do all the things that okay. you're supposed to do, like the hot springs and all that, because my host was is not into that stuff, and you'd have to kind of twist my arm to go to that mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, and it was mainly about visiting my friend. But I have to recommend it highly. They're way into coffee there. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Like do iced the, coffee? Do we have iced oh, coffee? Oh, yeah. Iced coffee. Iced lattes are like the jam there. <sighs> okay. Yeah. Good. A lot of traveling, you don't find an iced coffee. That was hard to find in the South when I played the South in this terrible band like 10 years ago. Iced coffee, you'd have to go to a McDonald's. I'm sure it's better now. Oh, it's better like, now. I think Europe was where I had the hard time. Really? The first time I went to like Europe, like I, I remember getting into Berlin and it's all espresso, but it's like you just have it really quick. Right. You can't have like, and there's no iced coffee. They'll put a, they'll put an ice cube in an espresso. Yeah, oh, okay. And call it but you have coffee. to beg for it, right? They yeah. don't. They don't like to give you ice. Is what I know. Oh my god, no ice. Yeah. Oh my gosh, no ice. I don't know what that is. Like, how is that not caught on? I don't realize it, but that's like very USA. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it, well, God bless the USA because for ice. we like yeah. it cold. Well, that sounds bad. No. What? Oh, for ice? <laughs> With everything that's oh, okay. going on. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. I'll just take that. Well, you know, that's one of the American things that everyone should be uh, falling in line with, I got to say. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know what Donald would say about that. I haven't written the tweet yet. Uh, but um, <laughs> Is he getting paid for the tweet? I, that's the thing. And from what company? Is it mm-hmm. Igloo? I'm blown away by, oh my God, not Igloo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's otter pops oh. <laughs> it's definitely it's definitely otter pops otter pops are fabulous the rest of the world should get behind us in this effort to have cold treats thank you i don't know he doesn't say thank you i don't know why i'm adding thank you to that he, he got paid sometimes. yeah maybe once in a while yeah i don't really keep track of it but i'd like to think that he says thank you because he doesn't mean it no not at all no but also cocktails don't have ice in them right in a no lot. it's just like a warm vodka soda <sighs> weird right and no air conditioning either and then like makeup on top of that like oh perfect four layers of it. yeah i know brian's told me some fun stories about uh certain accommodations at certain venues over in uh europe when he just sweats to death oh yeah and you can't tuck on that like <laughs> the the duct tape will not cling to your skin because oh, it yeah. cannot dry that's so do you have to use special garments for that that you're like i'm wearing this today because fuck that I wish I was like lazy. But I'm not. <laughs> You're very, <laughs> I'll, very I'll thorough. Suffer. Yeah, I'll yeah, suffer. Yeah. So, what do you do then? 
I'll get like a fistful of ice and I'll hold that close to my dick so it like <laughs> shrinks and like just kind of like will like go it'll you go, know? Away. It'll yeah, go, go away. away. Yeah, it'll go away. I was just get... like hanging. <laughs> You know, <laughs> come down. Go away. Go, go, not, we don't want you here right now. Um, yeah. Spray it with alcohol. Oh, spray it with alcohol. And so it dries it out and then spray adhesive and then like a lot of layers of tape. Wow. This might be the most shocking thing I think that we've heard. Did yeah. you learn this from somebody or did you Was it your yeah, personal out? experimentation? Huh? Both for sure. Okay. I've learned a few like tips and tricks um, from girls, but. I was like looking up on YouTube, of course, a child of the internet. Well, yeah. You have to. Yeah. How you get into that when I was, of course, 18, wanting to just tape my dick away. My mom was like, what is my <laughs> child going through? Yeah, that'd be a fun uh, window to leave up. Not just like drag tips, but how do I tuck my dick away? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any other good tuck tips? Um, oh, my God. I just learned one from uh, Asia O'Hara. So uh. once you're all taped up, yeah. you take um, a leg of denim and you sit on, you straddle the side of a cold, uh, <laughs> what are they called? Uh, toilet. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. And you rub what back are and, they called? Rub back and forth. And, oh, um, my God. But it has to be cold. It has to be cold. Okay. And a round edge. Okay, round so edge. So flat. denim, round edge. It's very niche. But like when you see it happen, you're like, oh, I've, I know an edge like that. Mm, niche tech. <laughs> <laughs> Custom. So did you have any kind of drag mother or was it all self-teaching? Um, it was pretty much all self-teaching. I kind of got like my way of the land in California through yeah. Raven. Yeah, sure. Um, and the clubs that you would usually perform at were what? Because you said Upland before, right? Yes. A 340 and then in Riverside it was uh, VIP and Menagerie. And I got to like travel, uh, like do those gigs and like kind of watch her, like how she... Um, works a gig yeah and i've definitely applied all those tips and tricks to how i travel now because it's a whole thing to learn right you don't know until you're in person about totally. doing the gigs thing right oh my god it's crazy because i think a lot of people just and I, it's so appropriate like they just think of what they saw of us on television it's like yeah it's legit all the time <laughs> yeah um and they don't think about the whole traveling and the like getting ready in the hotel and like waiting and giving me like creepy drivers and all that kind of stuff. So oh yeah. Tell me about some of the creepy drivers. I get hit on by so many creepy drivers. Well, I can imagine. Yeah. In and out of drag. Okay. Yeah. More so out of drag. What's the creepy driver approach usually? Because I'm sure that there's like at least one or two non-creepy drivers that you're like, oh, well, not, uh, not a bad idea. Yeah. Um, I, I can clock it like the first two minutes of the ride. Well, this one guy, he was bold, the last one. And I was like... um stoned so it was like not <laughs> not a great combination it was just also bad yeah um and he locked the backseat doors and he like made me get in the Oof. passenger seat uh-huh without I, getting outside you had to crawl up without getting outside well, he, like i just had to like yeah, yeah. hop on up mm -hmm. yeah it was it was so gross and then like he just pretty much was like touching like my leg the entire That's time awful. and i just like kept wanting him to like pull over and i kept saying pull over i think he we went like five minutes and he kept telling me how he wanted to leave his wife for me it was <laughs> wild and i was like this is your life this is so sad but yeah. like i'm also not like i can't like kick him in the balls i'm just like not that girl sure right well because you're almost at your final location right you just want to get out then no i just got out oh you just got point. out okay yeah. yeah so is that just what you do when that happens just get out get away Oh yeah, I feel like that's the best thing to do in of a course. situation that you're uncomfortable. Well, yeah, I mean, leave. Right, just leave. Violence really won't help anything. No, and that's yeah. like they're going for you. Well, if they're that's, coming for you, all bets you are off. You have to protect yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. That makes me think back about Paris's burning. Yeah. Is it Dorian Corey? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the dead, dead body. body. The dead body. She yeah. had to. That was defense. It was I'm defense. Assuming. Yeah. Did you see them like kind of like pay tribute to that on Pose? A couple weeks no, ago. No, I'm behind on pose. Um, yeah, they did a really fierce episode. But oh. that was like, the body was in there with the filming, I'm assuming. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. When the they timeline. Were in, oh, yeah, that, that body was in that closet for years. You do That's you insane. Do. You do, and then you got to hide it because, you know, someone's coming for you and you got to defend yourself. Oh, they die. Whoops. I bet you she makes like a fierce burrito. <laughs> she probably wraps <laughs> a fierce Oh, my God, her wrapping burrito. skills? Oh, forget about it. Yeah. Forget about it. And yeah. <laughs> Do you want to talk about tucking tips? I'm sure there was a couple in there, <laughs> oh right? 
<laughs> she knows about niche, huh? <laughs> I can she tell knows you about secure. a niche tuck, okay? It's in my closet. Hold on. <laughs> hey, look, you know, shoot an arrow, and it goes, well, I, I was about to misquote it, like um, Scarlett did on the last season. Oh, my God. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any favorite queens on the recent seasons? Mm, I worked a lot with Vanjie, and I really like Vanjie. Yeah. Um, and also really love Nina West. I mm-hmm. think she's like just one of those people you meet that's like crazy genuine mm-hmm. and crazy just like good yeah i can't imagine anyone disliking nina west or having some like rotten story oh yeah no i worked with her she's terrible oh like, yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, tell me tell me all the tea <laughs> <laughs> Fuck so, her. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so who are all the rotten people want to just list them for me oh the rotten people you know i don't necessarily have any rotten people everyone always thinks i hate manila yeah, well, because you do, because you were so mean to her. I don't. No, just, hate <laughs> <laughs> I was. Just, you were playing a game. I was playing, on a game show. Totally. Yeah, I love that you did that because it was such a bold move. And it's the best. Yeah, oh, that's what thanks. you live for when you watch the show. Not like, well, I didn't think it was right because you know you've been so nice to Fuck me. That no. shit. <laughs> I, when I got the call to go, I was like, I want to win it. Yeah. And I mean, at that point, I still like was like, okay, I'm here to win, and you're gonna knock the strongest player out that's right i the, thought that's what all stars yeah. was that's what the game is yeah and, but then sometimes they get kicked out too like didn't that happen to morgan right that happened to morgan i think so yeah and also manila in a previous episode or two previous episodes or something was sort totally of, down and also espoused the same philosophy that was like well really what i should be doing is thinking about how to get out my competition because right. this is a game she said all the stuff out there so did manila have any kind of hurt feelings about that afterwards you know i don't know None that she expressed to you then? None that she expressed to me. I was like, the only thing that I came home from All Stars worrying about was thinking that people were going to freak out that Valentina went home for Club 96 and I got to stay. Oh, right. I thought Valentina's fans were going to go crazy and attack me, but... Because they're passionate people, her fans. Yeah, they are passionate people and Club 96 (laughs) was just not the tea that week according to the show but um which was surprising as well oh thanks yeah no that was one of my favorite things it was wonderful yeah Yeah. thanks thanks sure um but then you did get a whole lot of nastiness coming your way yeah i did not see that coming at all she's got some very strong fans and this fan base i have to say is wild (laughs) do you think that they're just a little too extreme when it comes to going after a girl i think um i mean like i can definitely take it i it it just blew my mind that like people had st- strong opinions of me that had like. Oh, you're never. saying for her? You were like, how do they even care about her? That's what you're saying. You're being you're being shady. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> you're like, but for Manila, I mean, her? They care oh, about her? God, no, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> not at all over my head. Of all the girls, but not her. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just yeah, I just did not see that coming. So there's a lot of talk uh, recently, thankfully, that there is a problem with racism amongst the drag race community. And I want to know what your take on that is and what your experience has been. You know, I haven't gotten a lot of hate on as far as like racism yeah. on Twitter or um, Instagram or anything like that. Uh, it's more so just for my personality. Oh, okay. Well, look. Yeah. And <laughs> I mean, like, and and I, you can understand that. I can what you're trying to totally say. understand <laughs> that. I'm, if I'm not somebody's cup of tea, I can totally get that. Um, but not not so much the racist stuff. I'm pretty yeah. lucky with that. We were talking earlier about how you're starting to integrate your personality more with the doll, et cetera. <laughs> right? Oh, I love the doll. The doll. I, yeah. I, I love the use of the word the doll. Me too. It's queens. one of my favorites. Yeah. yeah. Everyone loves the doll. Mm-hmm. Um, and. <laughs> Did you find that? Do you find that the more you do that, the more comfortable you are with being fully just yourself in every way in public? Um, yeah, it's crazy because I'm like super, super, super comfortable like yeah. day to day. Yeah, um, it's just like when I'm in the doll. Yeah, and when you are the doll, after I've performed for five minutes or like ten minutes straight with like no breathing, and then like you pass me a microphone, my mind will just go blank. <laughs> it's understandable though. But I want to work on that because sure. it shouldn't be. It should be like, because I'm just so nervous about my performance all mm-hmm. the time. Every single time I get on stage that what I'm saying after isn't always the top priority. 
Well, sure, because you've sort of achieved your goal. Like you're focusing all day, I imagine, mm -hmm. every step of the way on your performance, right? now. So do you get the, not stage fright, but you get the kind of nerves before you go on stage every time? Oh, yeah. I'm like having to pee. I'm shaking. My <laughs> hands go like frostbite cold. Oh, um, yeah. Isn't that the best when that happens, and especially then you have to meet people? And then it doubles down on itself because you're mm -hmm. like, oh, my God, my hands are gross. Oh, my God. And then they're never going to not get gross then. Right. You can do anything you want. Run them under hot water, slap them a bunch. Right. Nothing's happening. And you don't want to wipe them on anything. No. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> but I think those nerves are good. I think that nerves are like what keeps me from wanting to keep doing better. Right. Because you're always trying to improve. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. What songs uh, are you doing lately? Ooh, I've been really loving um, this like Fat Boy Slim remix of mm -hmm. Praise You. Oh yeah, that's a great one. It's so good. And um, Crystal Waters, I'm really having a fun time performing yeah. that too. What but, are you listening to other than ooh, performance songs? I'm loving Satine. Mm -hmm. I love Satine. I love Drama Duo. Um, a lot of like housey, I love Cameron tracks. Um, in Chicago, I fell in love with like house music. I had never yeah. heard it before. Sure, yeah, and that's the home of house music. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like going to Metro every single Sunday to see Michael Serafini and Derek Carter was like the peak of my uh, young adult life, and I'm like in love with house music because of it. Yeah, I can imagine. So yeah, you get to Chicago, and then what? Describe the club scene. It's then. crazy. Yeah, like. Their bars, I, I mean, I'm used to California and everything closes down at two. But really, 145. Like 130. Really? Yeah. That's like, when I start flashing the lights. Yeah. And if yeah. you're a homebody, 12. Yeah. You know. <laughs> um, but in Chicago, all the clubs are open to like five, six on the weekend. Really? I didn't know that. Four during the week. Oh, wow. And okay. After situation, like <laughs> <laughs> noon. <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> um so there's always a party to go to and there's always like amazing music and that was a huge part of me wanting to go out and just like live my fantasy on the dance floor yeah absolutely um, now did you ever get into any balls in chicago no i um have a i had um, like a home bar in chicago so i can't really like I couldn't be in drag anywhere else but that. Oh, one, okay. You know? Yeah, I didn't realize that that's, like, that makes sense. But yeah. yeah, what's your home bar in Chicago? Roscoe's. Oh, Roscoe's. Yeah, I really want to go there. I was happy that Black Girl Magic came to LA mm -hmm. for, dra uh, what's the thing called? DragCon, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that little thing. Yeah. Um, so I Which got, is wild. Oh, God. That, this was my first one this year. Oh, my gosh. It was insane. It's crazy seeing it, right? It really is. And I didn't expect to be as tired in the days of between. Of course, I stayed up too late. Oh, and it was, I, mean, <laughs> I mean. I mean, you know, there's things happening. I don't know, you know. Yeah, I mean, I live here, but like, it's different. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be rude. There's like, you know, people who want to do things, you know. <laughs> yeah. Do you do both every year, the New York and LA? Um, so far, yes. I took a break from one New York because at that point, I had done like, five drag cons in a row yeah and the first one was i didn't i wasn't even on drag race yet i just like went in drag <laughs> oh wow okay. as a fan sure and i stood in line for some queens and got my autograph which and, queens um i stood in line to see violet and raven sure and juju b yeah and then the next year i was doing it it was crazy i have a question yes Hit katie me. please okay is your skincare routine the same as it is on tour Yes. Or do you have to like dumb it down a little bit? Well, I well on tour, I do it like once a day. When I'm home, I do it twice a day. What is it? Do you want to you want to go Let's through the steps? It. Yeah, AM and PM. That's right. Run it down for us. Okay. Your skin's wonderful. So. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. It is. Um, kimchi really got me into the Korean skincare game. So good. And her collaboration with Patchology and the sheet masks just like changed the fucking game for my skin. Um, can I curse? Oh, please. I feel yeah. like I've been cursing, but I never. Even I think I don't anymore. even notice anymore. Okay. I've been please, keeping curse tabs. more. Yeah, you have. You I, have yeah, the yeah, list. Yeah, yeah. We'll okay, terrific. So curse more. <laughs> okay. So step one: <laughs> fucking cleanser. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yes. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah. Step one is cleanser. Step two is oil cleanser. Mm -hmm. Step three is toner. Step four is essence. Um. Step five is treatments. 
You're making this up now because I saw it in your face. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, Explain essence. Ooh, yeah, essence is I use snail mucus. Mm-hmm. Um, Someone just gave me that at uh, when we were in Palm Springs. I was like, what? They were like, snail, have some snail. And I was like, I don't know. Did you put it on your face? Yes, I did. did yeah. It feel, like, what did it feel like? Sticky? Or did it feel like. It felt good. It okay. did feel sticky. Yeah. But uh, I was like, they were like, it's good, especially in this climate. And I thought, okay, great. But the important question is. Yes. Did it make you feel beautiful? Yes, it did. And glamorous. Yeah. yeah. See, that's, 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 that's why the key. I do the skincare. That's why. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you enjoy your um, little ritual of yes. a ritual of essence? It, ma- it makes me feel like good about the makeup that's going down. So, sure. Yeah. It just is like another part of the doll. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's important. Totally. It is. But thank you. Yeah. I love the mm. skin too. <laughs> do you like to shop? Um, I do like to shop and it has definitely been a problem in the past. <laughs> um, That's how it should be. Yeah. But that was like on my mom's dime. <laughs> oh, okay. But then when it was your money, you were very, uh. Yeah, careful and considered about uh, it not really yeah. i'm it kind of that's another thing about growing up and <laughs> your freaking early 20s learning about money is not something yeah. i paid attention to in high sure. school yeah and especially when you're getting all the gigs after season eight and everything like that it can be easy to just sort of go hey there's no limits on totally this. totally yeah. and i definitely like learned my lesson after season eight i i feel um and now i'm just like thinking more smarter and like what i want to do when I'm mm-hmm. not waiting in the club at 4 a.m., you know, and sure. I'm not on an airplane to get that paycheck. Yeah. Like, I want to be able to, like, make my mind up comfortably. And that's kind of what I'm working at right now. That's, I think, the dream for everyone. Totally. Right? What's your drink when you go out to drink? When I go out to drink, I'm a vodka water girl. Vodka water, interesting. I like vodka and water. It's just, like, I get to stay hydrated and I get a little tipsy if I want it. Yeah. Um, and it's no calories. But with ice. Oh, with ice. You're with not a, ice. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. You're not a crazy European savage. No, 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 no. no. Oh my God, I'm not a monster. No, exactly. <laughs> I'm not a demon. <laughs> Although if you were, you'd be a cute demon. So that's, oh, yeah. <laughs> ginger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you put any garnish on it? Like lime, lemon, anything? Um, Depends on the night, but not normally. If I do anything, it would be a lime. Mm. Yeah. And what were you drinking when you had the worst hangover of your life? Oh my God, when I was, uh, I was drinking fireball shots. <laughs> There you go. I think they're from here. Fireball? Uh, oh, yes. okay. That makes Are they sense. From Nashville? Yeah. Oh, you're right. It's, Nashville, well, Tennessee. Whiskey is all Tennessee. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Gag. There's it's so much disgusting. sugar. You know what? It gave me a lot of fun times when I was like well, good. 21, yeah. 22. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was like needing something sugary for some reason. Yeah, sure. For that extra pep. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely threw up a lot of fireball. <laughs> yeah. That seems like a yeah, be not so terrific com- coming back up. No. And then that peptide stuff. Oh, the, yeah. The lactate, what's it called? La- well, there's both, I think. Oh, wor- mm, I think peptide. That's what I was drinking the next day, and I couldn't even keep that down. Oh, no. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's rough. What about food? What do you love to eat? Um, I love Chipotle. Uh huh. Chipotle is my life. <laughs> um, what's your favorite thing at Chipotle? I really like a, cheese, ch- a chicken quesadilla, but like easy cheese. And like spread out all the chicken so it like goes up against to the edge of the tortilla. <laughs> but like I wish I could yell that at like whoever's making the quesadilla, but I'm not. Like yeah, I'll just do it myself when I get home. Sure, sure. Let the artist do their thing, and then you'll modify just it later totally. on. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's what we do as drag queens, <laughs> right? Exactly. Do you cook at all? No. Yeah, neither do I. I try. I'm going to more when I'm home. I haven't been home consistently for a long time. So then you get groceries, they spoil, right. and it just says Postmates. Jane, Katie knows about my uh, <laughs> uh, issue with Postmates, which is just that it's never not Postmates. Yeah. Oh, it's the like the worst. There's nothing worse than like getting delivery food and like you're like waiting for it because it takes forever. It too. does. Yes, exactly. And yeah. it's wrong. When it's the wrong, whole time. it is so maddening. <laughs> yeah. What's that? Oh, yeah. When it's wrong, you're just like. Then you have to like, I I w- we've talked about like I will I will call oh, yeah. I will do anything I can Work. and they're like we'll give you a credit of three dollars and nineteen cents what will that do yeah nothing right. no exactly nothing yeah exactly right. so, you know charge me three dollars and nineteen cents more and give me some kind of satisfaction anything. I, yeah anything mm-hmm. yeah any, I've had mine stolen before <gasps> I have too 
And oh it was Shake gosh. Shack, and it was really maddening because when I, I couldn't get another order because they just cut uh, off. As we do for Postmates. Yes. It's always at that hour. <laughs> yes, it is. At that's that exactly, hour where everything's closed. Magic hour. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So someone yeah. like answered your Postmates for you? I think, well, we I actually went to the building manager oh at my, my building God. and got the videotape. Shut up. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> it was so on. petty. It, oh, oh, yeah. Well, I've, Hi, my name's Craig McNeil. Like this is me. Yeah, like <laughs> I love. I was determined. I was like, Nancy they're not going to. And I think I thought someone on the floor. I was like, I think I know who did it. Turned out, Postmates person walked in, and then sometimes people get confused. There's fire doors in my building. They get confused that you just keep walking on the first floor to get to one of uh, up to get to my apartment, and so. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, she turned around and just went, ah, made a gesture and walked back out the door. And I had proof that the thing made it in the building because when I was walking up to the front, after it was like, please rate, you know, Vanessa on her order. I was like, wait a second, where the hell is it? The receipt had fallen off the bag and was stuck under the door. Oh, I was like, God damn it. So we got the proof. It turned out it was just a thief working on the inside. And she made a gesture that yeah like i a, love yeah like that, fuck this yeah i'm hungry it's time to go home that was my favorite yeah. keyword of that story <laughs> i feel like that's very podcast language like you have to talk like yeah you everything to has to be through. yeah exactly walk everything through do the gesture but you have to say everything mm. piece by piece yeah <laughs> make sure you got everything in there and then worry that you don't you know just like a performance uh, yeah, yeah totally my like problem i'm having lately is like I love nails so much. But oh, yeah. They get in the way of everything. Now, Katie, you, know? you just got fabulous nails done. I was having some trouble with typos. I was eyeing. Thank you. Yes. Fab. Thank you. I didn't have time to do mine today. It's impossible to text with these things. Mm-hmm. And then if you have autocorrect, it's all correcting incorrect. Like it's awful. <laughs> yeah. Awful. Autocorrect, uh, it just makes up words. And sometimes we'll put things in there that you never even thought of saying. Oh, my yeah. gosh. My, mine always autocorrects tall to <laughs> y'all. I wish you would do the opposite for me. I live in the South. I do say yeah all, all the time. Though. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, my mom hates it. <laughs> hates it. <laughs> Does your mom have, have any other pet peeves with uh, anything you say? Um, y'all ain't. And I cannot spell definitely or restaurant to save my life. <laughs> Every single time. It's like my stump. So, yeah. You're asked, like, are we going here? Are we going to have food in? Or definitely a restaurant? You're just not going to. Mm-hmm. That's not your thing. Mm-mm. No. <laughs> Postmates. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's why we use it. I, I yeah. can't spell it, so Postmates. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Postmates. Figure it out. That's a good ad. We were talking about ads the other day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so Postmates, because I can't spell restaurant. That's easy. Yeah. It's discreet. Whoa. And you don't have to tell anyone you don't know how to spell. Yeah, we were working and, on a product called Discreet the other day. I think that's going to be a hot one. Ooh, yeah. what's yeah. the product? Like a dating app, right? Yeah, it's yeah. a dating app for a dating sure. Dating app that's called Discreet. I don't really know what else we have. Who are the going clientele? Ahead. Well, they're very discreet. Yeah. Yeah. They, oh. How do you know? Yeah, exactly. Know. Oh, oh. No we, one knows. N- no this, one knows. This list is not going to be leaked. Like, oh this, no, this will not be Certainly the Ashley not. Madison. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no. These are Club ninety six clientele for oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. They uh, show up so, to the door. Yeah, they're Ooh. sophisticated. There's a password. I would. I would assume so. I would hope. Yeah. Multiple there, would need, there would need to be a password. <laughs> yeah. Password and safe word. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, because yeah. they're discreet, but, you know, they're very interesting. They're oh, they, spirited. Yeah. Okay, the safe word. The safe word, That yeah. adds a whole another compartment and maybe basement situation to Club 96. Well, we have to be careful. We should yeah. We should talk. I think we should. I we think should there's a collaboration. Business. A collab, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. definitely. <laughs> as long as that doesn't breach any of your Febreze exclusivity contracts. <laughs> well, that campaign... <laughs> I know, but listen, it's not out yet. So we got some time to work on this. Yeah. Uh Well, listen, you know, Febreze works well in the dungeon compartment. Oh, you're right. Right? You're right. Febreze is my safe word. There you go. What better? uh, to tie it in. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Can't get more uh, something than that. I can't think of the word. (laughs) Important. Important. You can't get more important, seminal seminal Seminal. than that. Yeah. You can't give a better endorsement. More important, seminal (laughs) endorsement than that. (laughs) Well, Naomi, this has been such a delight. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. No, thank you for joining us. What an easy, yeah. breezy conversation. Thanks for listening and head on over to patreon.com slash Craig and Friends. Slide on into the thunder buns of Hot Dog Club and unleash a torrent, a tidal wave of exclusive bonus content. And make sure you get your tickets for this Tuesday's premiere of The Smalls World, Naomi Smalls' premiere one-woman show link in the episode description to get to all of these things. Have yourself as good a day as possible in these times, and I'll talk to you soon.